Thank you. I'm Hiroki Tomioka from the University of Tokyo, Japan. I'd like to make a presentation on this title. Wheeled robot as the most common uh, types of mobile robots because of the high travel speed, simple structure, and easy control. However, this type faces difficult uh, the problems in the uh, traversing over the irregular terrain. So it is needed to uh, improve this point. In, the, in addition to that, practical scenarios include works in the unknown environment and inaccessible to humans. Under such conditions, it is difficult for us to operate and the <clears throat> autonomy is required. So we focused on the traversability over regular terrain and autonomous motion control of the wheeled robot. Okay. <clears throat> the wheels are the only components of the wheeled robot that directly uh, interact with the environment. The idea of tactile wheel is to take advantage of such a feature and acquire wheel tactile information. There are various types of tactile wheels, such as wheels uh, equipped with uh, infrared sensors, pressure sensor arrays, and uh, resistive wires. These are mainly used for ground estimation and measurement. And it is no application to autonomous motion control through machine learning. Therefore, we define the research objective as improving the traversability of a wheeled robot on irregular terrain by exploring the uh, autonomous behaviors using tactile information. For the uh, autonomous behavior generation, we adopted reinforcement learning. Here, I describe the experimental setup. First is the simulation environment, and the second part is about setting for response to learning. All the simulation uh, was done using the physics engine called Mujoko. Let me start talking about the model of wheeled robot. We adopted a wheel on the structure to be able to uh, travel rapidly and overcome obstacles as well and created a model with four swing arms and four wheels. Four arms is are connected with the body by rotary joint and controlled through uh, angle command. Each wheel is connected to the, uh, the end of each arm by a rotary, a rotary joint and a motor. And these wheels are controlled through the uh, torque command. Each wheel has 16 tactile sensors uh, mounted along its circumference at the interval of pi over eight. So the total is 64 sensors. To investigate the contribution of tactile sensing, we prepared three types of robot agents. Robot N has no tactile sensors, and robot SA acquires analog uh, tactile information, and robot SD acquires digital tactile information from the wheels. We call robot SA and robot SD together robot S. And uh, focusing on the geometric feature of the terrain, we prepared two types of irregular terrain. The first one is uneven terrain, which is uh, relatively artificial and represented as a part uh, as a line of uh, randomly generated convex parts. We uh, generated uneven terrain based on two parameters, unevenness frequency n and maximum height h. As you can see in, uh, from these figures, the higher the parameter n, the uh, thinner and more frequently the convex parts are generated. And the maximum height of the convex parts is uh, uh, based on the uh, parameter h. Nine types of uneven terrain were created uh, by combining three levels of each parameter. Compared to the uneven terrain, fractal terrain is more natural types of terrain and randomly generated using diamond square algorithm with two parameters, roughness n and maximum height h. As the parameter n increases, the uh, ground in a certain area is uh, subdivided into smaller pieces. And the maximum elevation of the terrain is determined by the parameter H. Fractal terrain also has nine 
settings. And this slide explains about the settings for reinforcement learning. We adopted the software analytic algorithm. And the state of the robot N comprises 26 dimensions. On the other hand, the state of robot S has the same state as uh, robot N plus 64 tactile, uh, foil tactile information, so the total in 90 dimensions. The action of the uh, action is uh, sorry, the action comprises four dimensional angle commands for uh, arm joints and four dimensional torque commands for wheels. The reward function is composed of two terms the forward velocity v forward and the uh, <coughs> penalty term c for flipping over. The upper limit of the episode is set to 1000 steps, which corresponds to 10 second simulation. Additionally, the uh, episode is n. Uh, episode ends if the robot flips over. One learning uh, experiment is composed of one million steps. And the, from the next slide, I'll show you the results of the experiments. These are two examples of the learning curves. The left one is the result of one of nine uneven terrain, and the right one is that of a fractal terrain. Blue, orange, and green lines represent the robot n. SA and SD respectively. As you can see, the presence of tactile sensing brings high reward. And oh, sorry. And uh, just a moment, please. And these are the example of the behaviors of the trained robot. The upper are the uneven terrain and lower are the fractal terrain. In the videos of the videos of the uneven terrain, the only uh, there is a convex part between the front and the rear wheels of the robot, and only robot SD can successfully uh, escape and move forward. On the other hand, in the videos of fractal terrain, there is no significant difference in their motions. And now I define the two indicators to verify the usefulness of the tactile sensing, the increased ratio of average return and sample efficiency. Average return increase ratio means how many times the uh, average return of robot S is higher than robot, that of robot N. Sample efficiency increase ratio means how many times faster the robot S uh, can get the average return of robot N than robot N. This table shows the average return increase ratio for the two train parameters N and H. The, uh, the return with tactile sensing is 1.18 and 1.31 times higher for uneven and fractal terrain. And speaking of the un results of uneven, uh, uneven terrain, we found that the parameter unevenness frequency and the average return increase ratio have a positive correlation. This implies that the uh, foil tactile information can be more useful when there are more contact points. And this, uh, this table shows the sample efficiency increase ratio. When the tactile information is available, the reaching the average return of robot N is 2.21 and 2.51 times faster for uneven and fractal terrains. So the tactile sensing can speed up learning. And finally, I'll show you the results on the adaptability to unknown terrain. In this experiment, trained robots run on the 17 types of unnamed, uh, terrain not used for training, which means unknown terrain. The, uh, the table shows the average return increase ratio of, of 10 trials for uh, each unknown terrain. And these numbers and 
these numbers are the values of robot SA and SD for which a uh, significant difference was confirmed using uh, a steers method. And the, so there are significant difference for 13 of 17 types of unknown, uh, unknown terrain in, uh, for robot SA, but only three types of terrain for robot SD. Uh, speaking of the robot SD, two of three types of such a terrain were, were uh, uneven terrain with the same unevenness frequency as the terrain used for training. So this imp indicates that robot SA is highly adaptive to unknown terrain, but robot SD tends to overrun with respect to unevenness frequency. So the, one of the types of the geometric feature of the terrain. So in conclusion, we experimented the combination of tactile wheel uh, robots and the reinforcement learning to improve the autonomous uh, traversability on irregular terrain. And we showed the usefulness, uh, usefulness in terms of uh, average return and sample efficiency in simulation. We also clarified the possibility that analog tactile information is desirable for adaptability to unknown terrain. So that's for all my presentations. Thank you for your listening. Thank you very much. So do anyone have any question? Yes. Thank you. It is very interesting idea. But uh, I have the question. Uh, are you planning to consider the deformable terrain? Because currently it was a uh, uh, even versus uneven, but the formable that means, uh, uh, for example, elastic, that means which uh, uh, reshapes temporarily under the wheel and next returns to the normal shape, or plastic, which undergoes the permanent deformation, like, for example, the sand, and it produces the growth, and you have the motion resistance. If you can a little bit comment this issue. Yeah, uh, actually, I. I have conducted the experiment on the another simulator uh, as, a, as a conducted the experiment on the deformable terrain uh, you, uh, using the another simulator, but uh, it is difficult for us to compare the uh, performance of between the uh, this uh, simulator Mujoko and the other simulator. And uh, additionally, we couldn't get the uh, satisfying results of the uh, on the deformable terrain simulator. So uh, I think it is because the, because of the limitation of the simulation for uh, elasticity or deformability of the terrain. So uh, if we uh, we want to exper ex uh, investigate the uh, effect of the deformable terrain, we have to conducts the real robot experiments. So yeah, that is that should be the future work. Thank you. Thank you very much once again. Thank you.